whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will. Thank you, Kevin. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray this morning that you, Lord, will open our ears that we may hear your voice through your servant. We pray, Lord, to open our minds so that we may receive your eternal wisdom. Open our spirit that we may know your leading and guidance. We ask, Lord, that you open our hearts that we may receive your holy gospel, that it may be written in our hearts, and that what we you and that we may use what we learn today in our daily lives. We thank you, Lord, for being with us today. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> well, grace to you and peace from God the Father and Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Quick question. By raising your hand, how many of you believe God hears your prayers? Higher, Nick, I can't see it. I'm just kidding. Good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to see that. Today we come to the promise of God that we should all take to heart. God promises that when we pray, He will hear us and answer us. The challenge we face is understanding the purpose of prayer and accepting the answer God gives, even if it's not the answer that we want to hear. The dictionary defines prayer as a solemn request for help, or an expression of thanks addressed to a god or an object of worship, or a religious service, especially a regular one, in which people gather to pray together, and an earnest hope or wish. The Bible defines prayer as a communication with God, communion with our Creator. Prayer is the key that opens heaven's door. And he who has the spirit of prayer has the highest interest in the court of heaven. Knowing the meaning of prayer, the function of prayer, the power of prayer, and the truth of prayer will bring about 100% answers to prayers. Praying has become a good habit. It should be. Simply put, prayer is about placing an individual or situation into God's hands and having complete trust in Him. How amazing and wonderful it is that we serve and worship a Heavenly Father who wants regular communication with His children. Just as many of us who are blessed to be parents like to stay in touch with our kids, where they're at, what they're doing, and where they're going. However, nowadays, you just take your phone out, push that little app, and your child's phone pops up, and you know exactly where they're at. God knows where we're at, what we're doing, and what we're thinking, all before we were doing, going, or thinking. But all he wants is to be included in a daily prayer. A simple phone call, per se, but in form of a prayer. But as we continue to consider what it means for us to live as Christians, how can we not recognize the importance of being in regular conversation, prayer, with opportunities for real back and forth feedback, answered prayers, with the God that made us, love us, and desires a relationship with us? It's been said that prayer is simply a way to talk to God, and if we do it correctly, for a way for us to hear them. Prayer means different things to people. Some people are comfortable with the Bible's terminology as calling upon God for things we desire. Jeremiah 33 says, Call upon me and I will answer you, and I will tell you great and mighty things which you don't know. In Psalm 50, 15, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will receive you, and you will honor me. Isaiah 58, 9. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, Here I am. Prayer is a direct appeal for God for some temporal or spiritual good 
It's requesting God to intervene in life's affairs for the good of those of whom we pray, either for someone or ourselves. Author Ian e. Bounds said, and I quote, Prayer is the divinely appointed means by which man comes into direct connection with God. By his ordinance, God holds himself bound to hear prayers. God bestows his great good on his children when they seek it along the avenue of prayer. No person can do great and enduring work for God who's not a person of prayer. And no person can be a person of prayer who does not give much time to prayer. The only way God can hear and answer prayers is if we pray. For silence brings about nothing, nothing said, nothing heard. And I believe, now let me rephrase that, I know God answers prayers. For he has answered mine and he has answered yours simply because at one time we prayed to be saved and our lives changed forever. We wouldn't be here in this house if it weren't true. I prayed and asked God, what do you want from me? And he answered me in a dream. And I now stand before you living out that dream. Amen? In my research, I've come to learn that both believers and unbelievers say God doesn't answer prayers. Or I pray when I'm in trouble. Or I pray when I'm sick. The one that's really heartbreaking was I pray on Thanksgiving Day because that's the day of prayer. That's when we give thanks for what we have in our lives, job, family, friends, and so on. And it's heartbreaking to think that one day out of the year you take time out to pray and give thanks. So here's a question for all you parents this morning. How would you feel if your child who only talk to you one day out of the year. There's not enough time in that day to find out and know all that they have been going through. Every day is Thanksgiving. Every day is a day of prayer. So many people believe that God's too busy to hear or answer prayers. Why pray if God don't even give you the time of day, let alone answer you? When I pray, I need an answer now, not in a week, not tomorrow, now. Unfortunately, to my shame, I'm guilty of that. I'll be stuck in heavy traffic, raining. I'm about to lose it. And I always say, Father, please grant me patience, but do it now. Because I'm about to lose it. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. We cannot tell God what to do. And for those who say prayers go unheard and unanswered, I say to them, prayer is the key in the hands of faith which will unlock heaven's door. You have to believe. Moreover, it's the desire of our Heavenly Father for all his children, believers or non-believers, to call upon him in prayer. And he will hear you and he will answer you. Prayer was created by God so that his children would have a way to talk to him directly and receive answers. He is listening. And I believe as well as you all believe that you can have perfect results every time we pray. God's holy word, the Bible tells us. We will. So when we ask God to save us, protect us, heal us, guide us, or remove all doubt, unbelief, or whatever the devil puts in our path, our Father will hear us. For prayer is the only way to affect what affects us. Our Father knows everything about us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows everything about our lives. He knows the cause or causes of our predicaments and the solutions for all our challenges, even before we ask them. Jesus tells us in Matthew 6, 7 and 8, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. 
He just wants to hear from you. Prayer embraces the smallest things in life as well as the ones that are beyond our control. Prayer takes the wants of the body and mind. In fact, everything that belongs in this world. And as well as those things that have to do with the eternal interest of the Spirit. We all read the Bible daily. And if we pay attention to the teachings of our Savior Jesus Christ, while Jesus himself prayed, his parables and miracles were all expounding to prayer. Jesus said little or nothing about how to preach or what to preach, but he spent his strength and time teaching men how to speak to God, how to commune with him, and how to be with him. For Jesus knew full well that a person who has learned the craft of talking to God will be well versed in talking to men, women, and children. He is listening. And we have his full attention. I know most of you know who Norman Rockwell is. He's an artist who does lifelike pictures. He has one where he's sitting on a chair, his arms folded over his legs, slightly bent over with his hands together. In front of him is a little child who's looking at him and smiling. And the, the man he's talking to is also smiling. In a way, I see God doing that when we pray. I mean, you can see the smile on his face. However, when he answers our prayers, he does it according to his will and his timing. We will never understand his will or his timing. Basically, the way I look at it, that's beyond our paycheck, let alone our simple human intelligence. But we must have complete trust in God that his will and timing are done. Not our timing or desires. Even if it's not the answer we want to hear, or if it's a no, he has a good reason for it. For he created us with a purpose and a plan to make us prosper. He will not let us fail when we put all our trust in him. Many Christians confess that the spiritual discipline they struggle with the most is prayer and how to pray. Followed by, well, I know the book. I just can't remember the verse. And I'm guilty of both. But I've come a long way in praying. I still struggle with verses. Now, if you find yourself in this group, don't feel bad. You're not alone. It's not some new thing brought on by the way of the world, even though the world is moving away more and more away from God. The very apostles of Jesus Christ struggled with how to pray. Apostle Luke records it this way in the gospel. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, Teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. And Jesus said to them, What follows is familiar to all of us, especially for those who have grown up in the church. Jesus' response to his disciples' request is what we have come to know and refer as the Lord's Prayer. A deeply beautiful and yet simple model of how to engage in conversation with God the Father. Now most of us have memorized the Lord's Prayer. It's repeated every Sunday in churches around the world. Books have been written about it. Sermons have been preached on it. And it appears twice in Scripture, once in Matthew and once in Luke. Countless other references exist within the Bible that tells us we should pray and pray regularly. The disciples didn't ask for instructions on sharing the good news, 
or how to heal or cast out demons, or even how to study the scriptures. They learned all that by following Jesus on his ministry. The disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray, for they knew it was important and it will help them on their journey. The Holy Word of God, the scriptures are full with counsel that encourage us to pray. There's great value in being taught the Lord's value. And by learning it, we can teach it to others. It's a model prayer that shows us how to pray. But yet very few of us follow it in our prayers. Can you imagine if we did follow it, what our prayers might sound like and how much more effective they would be if we did? If every time you get into a conversation you, with someone you care about, and they simply repeat the things over and over again, even though they use loving words, and you respect their conversation, but it becomes meaningless to you. Imagine how God must feel if our prayers become ritual, or with just our list of demands, never acknowledging his mighty power and all that he does for us, and not allow God to respond or get a word in edgewise. I need this, I need that. And when are you going to give it to me? Answer me. I'm oh, sorry, but God is not a genie that you rub a lamp and get three wishes. God is our Heavenly Father. And He wants to hear from us. It is not only His desire, but He deserves it. Amen with me if you agree. Jesus condemned the religious leaders of his day by quoting the prophet Isaiah. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Simply said, a prayer from the heart and with your heart, not just by your heart. God hears us pray, and God will answer our prayers. Thanks be to God that he keeps his promises. Because we are the only race on earth that makes promises and breaks them. Only to make another promise not to break it. And then you break that promise again. And in the scripture that Kevin read, ask whatever in my name the Father will be glorified in the Son. Ask anything in my name and I will give it. It's that plain and simple, black and white. Jesus said it, Jesus meant it, and Jesus would not have said it if he was not going to listen to you. But just remember that it will be by his will and his timing. God's ways are for our good and his glory. His ways are free of sin and selfish gains. And even though God might make us wait to draw closer to him, to have a relationship with him, and the fulfillment of a dream, we were created before the world began, created in his image and with his love. We were not created to be ignored. God sent his one and only son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to teach us to walk with God step by step, to teach us to talk with God word for word. Jesus lived for us, he died for us, and was resurrected for us. He shed his blood and gave his life on the cross for us. Now one day, we will return home to him. God hears our prayers, for not a single prayer slips by him because there is no time of day or night that he is not listening. Our Heavenly Father wants to hear us pray because he is listening to our very heart. And he just doesn't want to hear facts. But he wants to hear your fears, your hopes, your dreams, and your desires. Our confidence is that our Father's heart yearns to love us fully and completely. So tonight, and every day, I encourage you to pray with confidence and pray with purpose. 
He is listening. Lift your eyes off yourself and see the world around you. Ask God to give you eyes to see. He is listening. Pray for the people you love and for the beggar on the street. He is listening. But don't just pray and walk away. Ask God to direct your path and open your life to him. You may in that moment feel that your prayers are being answered. God is providing solutions even as we are praying for him. Our Heavenly Father is always listening. And you may discover that God's answered prayer was simply you. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus, our Lord, and the life everlasting. Depart in peace.